Hey everybody, we are live, Shooter's Mindset, episode 217 with Katie Godfrey from Kestrel. Uh, she's the Global Executive Account, right? Something like that? that. Something she does, like that. She does all the sales for Kestrel. Yes. So yeah. um, we are glad to have her this week. And uh, we've got Heath as our co-host. How are you doing today, Heath? The stand in, doing well. The, the replacement. The replacement. You slid yeah. in here at the last minute. Yeah. All right. Well, Katie, everybody's here really to see you. So, can you just start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into shooting and Kessel and all that stuff? Yeah. So, I've actually worked at this company for 20 years. This is my 20th year here. Um, I started pretty fresh out of college. I was in rowing. And um, our parent company, Nielsen Kellerman, makes rowing electronics. So I got recruited into the company, um, and I never did a day of selling rowing products. I started on Kestrel right away. When I started, we had three Kestrels. The Kestrel 3000 had just been released. Now we have about 50 different Kestrels. Um, the ones that I have gravitated to and I really love are the ballistics line. Um, I got into this market probably about eight to 10 years ago. Um, I've been very fortunate and the people that I get to work with are usually um, great instructors. I get to uh, have really amazing opportunities shooting all throughout the United States. And um, that's basically it. Sweet. It just went from there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then I got hooked and now I keep buying guns and that's happened to me too. So had you been shooting before that? No, no, I had never touched a gun. I had never even shot a gun. My dad um, is a Marine and he would shoot, but I never, he never took oh. me. Um, and I uh, never shot a gun until I was here at Kestrel. Um, the FBI invited me up to an open house with a lot of guns and it was a lot of fun. And then after that, I started to get the bug and it was kind of, you know, you'd go out to a range and people would hand you ammo and you just ask for more and more and more and shoot more and more. So it's fun. It is fun. So what's your favorite now? Pistol, rifle, long range? What? What's oh, your favorite? Long range. Long range by far. I mean, I've done the most time behind a rifle and uh, pistols. I'm intimidated by them, so I kind of avoid them. I can't stand when they show up in the PRS matches. That's uh, <laughs> definitely my kryptonite is having a pistol stage. Um, but I, I love long range. It's I think that it, it's a good equalizer. You know, the, the gun doesn't care who's behind the trigger. Everybody can pull it and... and uh, it's really fun. That's awesome. Before we get too much into this, uh, I want to just remind everybody we have the Q&A. You can ask questions on Facebook. There's a post that Heath is going to monitor on the um, Shooter's Mindset Facebook page if you want to go there. Or you can ask questions here in the um, YouTube chat or in the YouTube comments below. And we'll try and get those over to Katie. If you have any questions about Kestrel, how to use it, what it can do, whatever, we're going to ask her some questions too. But I know everybody has some questions about them. Um, we also want to remind everybody this will be on the Shooter's Mindset website, uh, the shootersmindset.com, and there's blog articles on there every week, so go check out some of the articles that are on there. Um, don't forget we have t-shirts, 2018 TSM t-shirts. I think the pre-sale is still up. Um, Anthony couldn't be with us tonight, by the way. Um, he had a little minor emergency, so he's not with us tonight, but I believe he's still taking t-shirt orders, so check into that. And we want to sh thank our show sponsors, which are Gear Nation USA and Tactical Shit. You can get all your gear at tacticalshit.com. And we have some discount codes for them later in the show. Uh, getting back to some more questions. So for those of you that don't know, um, like I know a lot of long range, everybody has a Kestrel and pulls them out, but I just got into the game and didn't really fully understand what all a Kestrel could do. I was like, so it's just reading the wind. <laughs> so for someone that doesn't know what all it does, what are some, you know, what's the major usages of the Kestrel? Right, well, I mean, first off, I guess this, this is a Kestrel. So for people that really don't know what it is, um, and the Kestrel, it started off as a weather meter. So it does wind, temperature, relative humidity, barometric pressure, calculates all the derivatives of that. Um, but the ballistics meters are all of that plus a full ballistics calculator built in. So 
it will, you input all of your gun data, you build out your own gun profile. And um, we call them gun profiles, but they're really more of a bullet profile because it goes to whichever bullet that you're actually putting in there. Um, and once you build that in, you can input your ranges, your direction of fire, and it's gonna give you your elevation holes and your windage holes. For a quick yes, summer. I have one too, but yeah. mine's orange. <laughs> orange is pretty orange. The, you know, we say that the blaze orange color is typically the second color that you buy and the last one because you lose your first one because you get the cool tactical colors and you lose them in the grass. <laughs> oh, that's true. That yeah, the orange style. is pretty bright. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and buy the orange one. Yeah, I actually have a pink one, but I'm not supposed to show this on any of the shows or anything. So, oh, but you saw it here first. Yeah, there's my Sarah coated pink one. You saw it on the shooter's mindset. <laughs> Um, I mean, I agree there. It, these little things are amazing. What all it can do. We were talking in the pre-show a little bit that I didn't realize how much wind affects elevation. Like yeah. I knew that this was a wind meter and I need to look at, okay, the cross wind is this, so I'll need to hold right or left, but I did not realize how it much lift it up or push it down. Yeah. How much sure. the, yeah, the wind affects elevation and the, the DA it can change and it'll, you know, we had one stage this past weekend that we were going along and it was kind of warm. I mean, not warm, warm, but it wasn't cold. And uh, the wind was one direction and all this. And like all of a sudden, like this, the temperature dropped about 10 degrees. The wind completely changed and everybody was like digging their kestrel out of their bag. I'd already done my dope for that stage. I had my dope card written out. I went and changed all, you know, did another environment reading and changed it all. All my dope had changed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, um, my very first match, I figured that I'd be super smart and just build out the whole first day stages, all of them, and just build out my dope. And then the next morning, every single stage, I sat down and redid it because it had all changed, of course, you know, with the sun hitting us. And as the sun was getting hotter, we were down in Florida at core and every single stage I had to change my dope. Yeah. So I was down at uh, Clinton house earlier today on a thousand yard range and it was they had uh, flags up at each yardage marker, right? Mm -hmm. And at the 400, zero wind, a tape flag, dead hang. 500, probably at about a 45 degree angle going left. <laughs> I was like, how do you measure do you that? that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, one one of the things that we get asked all the time is the Kestrel's only going to give you your wind speed right at your muzzle. Like mm -hmm. you're not getting wind down range right. and people ask how important that is. Um, and I use it more as a training tool because once you start to figure out like what that, you know, that flag that you were seeing at 500, what that was actually doing and what wind speed would move that flag that distance. And that allows you to kind of project it the whole way through. Right. So. Right learning using your kestrel as a training tool i find that more effective for wind speeds than i do actually using the windage holds that it gives me right well when i first started this i mean that you know i'd ask the golden question how do you read wind how do you read wind and everybody'd be like i mean eh, it's kind of eh. i still am not great at it <laughs> yeah but i've been doing it just long enough to kind of understand what they mean because it's not something that you can just be like, oh, when it's like this, it's this. I mean, it is much more of an art than a science. You know, yeah, for sure. I think Regina is the one that always says that uh, the elevation is science and the uh, wind is voodoo. Yeah. So, you know, trying to figure out what it is, it's kind of a feel for it. And so what I've learned is you kind of got to come up with your starting point and then adjust during the stage based on what you're seeing as you're shooting. Um, but it's such a weird oddity about reading wind. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's a science and there, there are guys that, um, you know, I always, when we work as teams, I think that a spotter actually has a lot harder of a job than a shooter. And when the spotters are trying to read the wind and give the shooter a really accurate hold for that wind and make adjustments based off of hits, it's, it, it's impressive. And you can see a spotter getting their shooter right on the target. If I could have a good spotter, I could like clean stages. It'd be amazing, my thing right? is, it's funny on my videos where I'm hitting, I'm I'm not fast by any means. I still time out, but I, I'm faster, you know, in between shots. But when I'm not hitting, you can see I just like sit there and it's because I'm like trying to think, well, it, it hit there. So where should I? Right. <laughs> I'm so slow in between running the bolt and it's because I'm 
my brain is racking like, okay, where should I aim next? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Nick, Nikki and I shot a, uh, a team long range match a couple of years ago. And uh, there were some military teams that showed up at this long range match that were very skilled. Like they had their uh, spot and scope out that had mills built into the spot and scope. You could tell who worked together all the time doing that and who didn't because it was like one half left, one full up, you know, and it go from one miss to a hit, second yeah. shot, you know, yeah. it's like, or, or they might, you know, another half mil, another half, you know, whatever, they were calling it out and making adjustments and it was super fast. And that that's the difference between spotters and shooters working together back and forth and knowing, because it's not only calling it, but it's, my half meal is the same. I mean, it's a measurement, right? But there's yeah, still you're a shooter maybe working there. in an MOA or something and calling yeah. that different. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I also like when I when I get to go because I get to go to a lot of the sniper comps. Um, Kestrel sponsors those, and to watch the shooter spotter teams work together, and the spotter will continuously call wins until the shooter takes the shot, so that as the winds are switching back and forth. They're making those adjustments, so they're holding, changing the hold until the shot's taken, and then if the wind picks up too much, they just tell them hold, don't shoot, and then they pull it back in and stuff. It's you can learn a lot. You know, mm -hmm. we always talk about people that should go volunteer as an RO and go to these go to sports if you're intimidated by it. Go to the PRS match and volunteer. You can learn so much more than actually um, spending a day by yourself on a range. Yeah, that's all I've done. I haven't been able to take a class or anything. I just started going to matches and I mean, it's eating my lunch, but I learned something every time I go, you know, by asking them, hey, what were you holding and, you know, watching what they're doing and yeah, it's, it's there's some great shooters out there that are so impressive. I'm like, there are, and that's, but this community is, that's what I love about this community. That's kind of why I've gravitated to this part of the Kestrel line is because everybody's willing to help your competitors, but they will all come off the line. 90% of them will come off the line and tell you what they did and tell you where they messed up and tell you what was switchy and what was weird because everybody wants to help everybody else get better. And um, I, I really admire that of, of this community. And, and, you know, I see people all the time just getting together and helping each other out. It's really nice. It is very, very great community. Heath, when are you going to come do some PRS? <laughs> uh, probably when I get that 224 put together. So I'm waiting on a criterion was working on another barrel. I got one and, uh, that it was, it was, uh, it favored a lighter 224 bullets and I was wanting to shoot the heavier stuff like the 90 grams and stuff like that. So they were working on another one that was supposed to be a little better with the, uh, heavy bullets. So I'm waiting on that. And then I really need to get a, a first focal plane, really high power <laughs> out. Yeah. That's, that's a lot harder to come by than the rifle is. The rifle's <laughs> easy. Yeah. Yeah. Spend a lot of money on glass for sure. Mm -hmm. but yeah. You need it. I mean, it's not like it's just wasted. I, no. It makes a difference. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Definitely but, uh, makes a difference. I, I mean, I know it's different, but me and Nikki shot that long range. It wasn't PRS. It's like. Was it a DMR? PRS for three gunners or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was probably like a DMR, yeah. yeah. It was like uh, the farthest shot was like 800 yards and the targets were fairly big and stuff like that. It was fun and it had probably more pistol in it than. Which you probably usually see at a PRS match, and I, I really like. I mean, I like shooting my two twenty three out, and, you know, because still five and six hundred yards is depending on the size of the target. You know, it's still pretty decent. You well, winds are going to really throw that around too, so winds are going to yeah. be a big factor. Yeah, I agree. But hey, that's where the skill comes in, right? Exactly. Yeah. And not only that. The one we were shooting didn't have a uh, didn't have a round limit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So that helps. Yeah, you know if if you can stay on top of your game with 
your holdovers and, and reading and, and stuff like that. Like if, if it takes five or six or seven or whatever to get on there, you know, you're not working a bolt, you know, the gun's doing all the work for you, but all you got to do is do a holdover and squeeze the trigger without moving the gun. So I enjoyed it. I think yeah. it's fun. That's why I want to, that 224 will be pretty much the same. Like the gun doesn't really move a lot from what I've been told. They say you can, uh, Pat Kelly told me you can watch a trace in your own scope because the, go the gun kind of stays still. So That is uh, cool. I did that for the first time, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago with my rifle. I was like, oh, my gosh, I just saw my own trace through my scope. That is cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you worked with a Kestrel? Uh, not like hands-on, but me, so like – Probably a year and a half ago now, I guess. Uh, me and uh, Eric Eckhart and Mike Sexton and mm -hmm. uh, a couple other folks. I can't even remember who was out there that day, but I remember Eric had one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was he was working with it, so he was kind of he knew a lot more about shooting long range than I did. That was for sure. So any little bit of knowledge that he was dropping, I was had my ears open and. He was explaining Trace and watching that and actually helping Nikki see it because I had seen Trace before. And um, it was hard to explain, you know, if you've never seen it. You know, the swirl where the bullet goes, and we were shooting, I think he had a, uh, um, a uh, 338 or something out there that day. And it was interesting to watch. Is we were shooting at like a eight or nine hundred yard target, and to watch the bullet arc and, and how like how when you see the trace, you can see really how high it goes before it comes back down. Yeah, right. And that, that's that's kind of amazing too. So and then the you learn three. Yeah, the three oh eight trace is fun for trace. What's that? I said three oh eight trace is more fun to watch because it's like. Whoosh. <laughs> yeah, and it's slow, probably comparatively to, to a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I think so that's high. Yeah. And that has <laughs> a lot to do with, you know, the faster the bullet's moving, the less time you have to see the trace. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Katie, what were you saying that the Kestrel tells you where to look for trace? Yeah, if you look in the range card and you scroll over in the range card, it will tell you for each distance that you're shooting where to look over crosshair to see trace. So. Oh, wow. Like you guys learned, cool. once you actually see Trace, it's it's pretty easy to figure out where it's going to be, and you can see it every time that you that you pull the trigger. But um, for somebody new, you know, you kind of tell them, "Well, look up." And you know, um, I remember an instructor one time telling me he said everybody should look up, and he had half the guys on the line looking like way up. <laughs> so he uh, the the Kestrel will now just tell you exactly where to look up. It's pretty cool. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, so in life, I need easy buttons for everything. So I heard that there's an easy mode. Yep. Yeah. What so, is this easy mode they speak of? Well, around right at SHOT, we came out with a whole new code release. Um, and we actually re, we released a new product as well. So uh, we did a Kestrel, the 5700, and it's a basic ballistics calculator in the Kestrel. And... Um, what we wanted to try and do is take a lot of the voodoo, take a lot of the scary stuff out of the Kestrel um, and, you know, start off with shooters that are just starting off. Like, what do they know and, and what can we kind of guide them through? You know, to really utilize a Kestrel, it's helpful to do a class and the classes are two days long and not everybody can get out to use it. So starting off with the 5700, um, the Elite will also go into easy mode. You can put it into easy mode and it talks you through everything. So. Once you go into easy mode, it locks you into a single gun and a single target. And then it kind of talks you through everything and makes sure that you check off your environments and you update everything that you need to update. Um, and it walks you down that step. And when you turn off easy mode and go into ballistics mode, you can always then just remember those same steps. And if you start to forget them or you're in a panic and you're out of stage and you just need to get through things, throw it back into easy mode and it's just right there. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. That's what, and talking, you know, uh, doing show notes and all and coming up with questions. 
Anthony was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to have to use something I have to have a class for. And then yeah. we said, well, it says there's an easy mode. So it's amazing that this little device can have an easy mode and be simple. And then it can be also do so much that you need a class to be able to yeah. you know, and learn all the things it can do just because it can do so much. Right. We're trying to really simplify things. Um, the, the long range market is is exploding right now. There's so many people getting into it. And there's so many guns, you know, that are coming out that are affordable guns that can get a shooter out to a thousand yards, easy day. Um, so that's why we have the 5700. And now we're doing more and more videos. In um, in a couple of weeks, we're going down for a video. I get to go down and do a video shoot down in Texas and doing more and more instructional videos. So people can just watch YouTube things that are two minutes long, talking you through truing and talking you through all the different steps to do things. That's awesome. That was one of the questions that we had on here was, um, you know, where can people go to find out how to use it? So what is it going to be on? Is there a Kestrel YouTube channel? Yep, we do. We have that. And, um, you know, they told me exactly what that channel was called and I forgot it. So I'm going to pull that up right now. But um, we started posting all of all of our different videos on there and you can see different instructional videos. And on that same YouTube channel, we share some other people because a lot of people made their own videos like they figured out that there was a hole and rather than charge people they just shared videos which was really helpful yeah that is awesome um it's kestrel, oh, kestrel weather meters tv that's easy okay so kestrel weather meters tv will get you all the instructional videos that you could ever dream of yeah well we're working on it <laughs> so keep checking back because more will come what were you about to say, Heath? I was like, I know I was told because I know, you know, in three gun, you don't, you don't usually shoot that far to really. Not that you couldn't. I'm, I'm sure there's a use for it, but really, I mean, if you're shooting 300 yards in the end, the, yep. the, the variation is is not that much. But, um, and talking with shooting further out and stuff, it was explained to me a lot of the, like apps and stuff people use on their phone currently. But they're not they're not bad for kind of that short intermediate range stuff. But the, the further you get out, the worse or the less accurate that they are. I guess is a is a more uh, accurate statement for that. But since they uh, like they uh, they don't account for the change in bullet coefficient as it travels through the air and slows down and you right. Know, Basically, there's a whole lot of stuff built into the Kestrel information wise that a lot of people either don't have access to or just mm -hmm. never use and put into their programs. Well, the Kestrel has applied ballistics behind it. So Brian Litz, um, you know, if you ever want to read his books, they're amazing books. They're really heavy because, you know, they're all about ballistics. Um, but he he went through and test fired all of these different rounds and he built out these custom curves. So in the elite, you get to open up custom curves. Um, but we also partner with a lot of those apps that people have. Um, there's really good apps that you can get and you don't have to use the Kestrel with ballistics on it. You can start off with a Kestrel 5500 that will give you all the environmentals. It'll give you wind direction. And with Bluetooth, it'll just link to that app and update all of the environmentals in the app. So mm -hmm. um, we recognize that everybody has different opinions and just different needs for what they're actually going to do when they go shooting. Um, everybody has their own special sauce. And uh, so we give that option through apps. All right. Hmm. Didn't know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Because a lot of people really like their app or whatever. I, oh, you know, I sure. had an app before. And so the first match that I had this Kestrel, I didn't know how to use it yet and didn't trust it. And so I used the wind and Bluetoothed it to my app. But now I didn't even touch my app this last match. I Yay! just did it nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I did learn not to just like leave the environment on. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize that and it, you know, capture yes, no, it was left on yes. And so I had it like sitting on the deck on the, the train up day and I was like, man, my dope like keeps changing and like, it's not right now. I don't understand what's wrong. And Sean Murphy was like, is your, are you still capturing the environment? I was like, I don't know. And so he got it. He was like, yeah, you have to turn this off because right now it's sitting here baking in the sun 
instead of up in the air, he said, let's get up in the air and twirl it around and see what the yeah, environment's doing and then lock it. Yeah. And, you know, I, as Kestrel, I should know better, but I totally did the same thing where I switched out barrels um, on my, I went from an 18 inch barrel to a 22 inch barrel. I went out and shrewd it and I was like, something's, you know, like, this is awful because my muzzle velocity didn't work. I'm like, this sucks. And then it turned out that my Kestrel still thought I was in the environment on Texas and I was in West Virginia and it was a huge DA difference. And as soon as I actually updated the environment, everything was right. And the muzzle velocity made sense. It actually went up with the longer bullet or with the longer barrel. Uh, so I kind of feel like sometimes when we screw up on things, that's when you can learn the best. But one of the code changes, it actually sounds like you need to update your code. So oh, that, um, that question's coming. Yeah. So one of the code on the home screen now you can see live or lock. So right now it says um, lock. You can uh, go over and make it live. So it's you don't have to go into it to see if you have it live. Um, gotcha. Because, yeah, for me, I have certainly have left it live and then just sat it down and, and got, you know, some wonky readings. So we put that onto the home screen so it gives you more visibility. That's awesome. Or stuff it down in your bag and and you don't realize it's still, you know, and you pull it out and it's wrong. So yep. yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk about that update in just a minute, but we are 30 minutes into the show. So I believe we had a little bit of news. Katie said that maybe oh. we would give, we would give away a Kestrel. Oh yes. Yay. Yep. So if you want to be entered to possibly win this Kestrel, what you're going to do is if you go on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, there's a post that says join us live. And it says in there, this is where you put the comments for the giveaway. So if you will comment in there, the farthest target you've ever hit. If it's hit. a mile that you, if you've hit a mile, put a mile. Don't lie. We're going to ask for pictures and video <laughs> proof. But Katie has that. But um but we're going to ask for proof. No, not really. But it, even if it's only 50 yards, say you don't do long range and maybe you want to get into it, you can just put down the longest thing you've ever hit. It's 100 yards or whatever. But put down the longest target you've ever actually impacted. And next week on the show, we will announce the winner of that contest. And that person will win a Kestrel. Yay. And we also have continuing... Um, on that, well, actually, I just got a text, so I have to say hi to Isaac, Ryan, and Anna. I know I'm supposed to do a shout out at the end, but those are my three kids, and it is way past their bedtime, so they need to go to bed. And <gasps> hi, guys. Okay. So, anyways, <laughs> back to that. So this is our Target program, and we have these uh, shoot and sees. We we partnered with Birchwood Casey, so it's the shoot and sees. But we did big targets so that you can put them out to long range, and actually have impacts on them. And if you post them onto our Facebook page or Instagram, or you can just send them to us, send us pictures. Uh, we have a Kestrel challenge coin that you can win and we'll share all your information. And it's the same thing. We want to see what's long range for you. And we're also interested to see, you know, what ranges are you shooting at? Um, what guns are you using? A lot of people that are getting into long range don't even know that they have a long range down the street from them, that, they don't, that there's a target that they can go shoot. Um, so, it's a good way to get the community talking about stuff. That's awesome. I know where I'm at, I felt like there were no long range shooters when I started. I was like, there's like nobody here except my friend Joe Kaylee. Um, and then I found out multiple people actually live here that are shooting. And I was like, oh, wow, there are some people shooting around here. So, yeah, definitely good to network that. Yeah, so for sure. I'm like, I'm like, this is not the longest shot I've ever taken, but to me, it's the most impressive. So this is, and I have a witness, Buddy Brown was a witness, so he can verify that this did occur. Uh, when we went out to New Mexico to shoot the NRA tactical police competition years ago, uh, we were checking the, checking the zero on our red dots after we got out there. And they have some crazy public ranges out there compared to what we have here, just wide open targets everywhere. And there was a, I think it was a 36 inch gong at 750 yards. And I was shooting an 11 and a half inch 223 
with a red dot on it. <laughs> I hit it with the second shot. A guy called, like I shot the first time. And he was like, "You were, uh, your, your elevation was right. Your windage was a little to the right. You need to bring it left, and about the same windage, and shoot it again." And I did, and he called a hit, and I was like, "That's it. I'm done." <laughs> Drop it. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying for a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely, definitely lucked that one right in there. So that's that's my not longest, but definitely my to me most impressive shot to pull off. Yeah, you know uh, that far with a red dot and such a short gun on top of that. So right, were you basically just aiming up for that yeah. shot? It was a uh, it was an EOTech sight at the time, and I think I was using the bottom circle as a reference. The, the hash off the bottom as a reference for, I was aiming into the horizon. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guarantee that, that bullet was like, you know, it was, it probably nicked the steel. It was coming down at such a steep angle, you know. So. It's a hit. It's that awesome. is funny. I shot yeah. at the one mile target this weekend, but I did not hit it. And I didn't want to waste a ton of ammo. I did hit it 1340. I was impressed with that one. Wow, and then awesome. with Sean Murphy helping me, we were sitting there, you know, playing around and with him helping me and, and telling me, you know, where to hold and everything. I hit the 1192 target. It was an Ipsic and I did a headshot. He was like, all right, let's try a headshot on that. I was like, there's no way I'm going to hit that. He's like, you know, hold the same, you know, when did you were holding and this, you know, elevation. And I did and I hit it and I was like, holy cow, I just hit the dang head of Ipsic. <laughs> it was crazy. So this question was for later, but since we're on this topic, Katie, your picture that we used for the show announcement. Yeah. Tell, tell us about that. Cause we had some questions on there as far as what gun you used and all that. So tell us about that picture. So that is my very first gun ever is a LaRue Predator 260 caliber. Um, that was actually done with my 18 inch barrel and it was down in Canadian, Texas. Um, I had two amazing spotters hanging out behind me. So I had uh, Pete Gold and Todd Hodnett were both spotting for me. If anybody knows who they are, um, I really should have hit. And it was my second shot, so I missed on the first shot. But um, it was, yeah, it was it was a mile. And then uh, we pushed out to some rocks a little bit farther. But uh, we had guys shooting at the uh, with a 308 and the hold you know, the change in the hold that they had to do for a 308 to get out to that distance versus the 260. The 260 is just such a nice flat round. Um, we ended up putting everybody over to my gun and then everybody got their mile hit, all the, the entire Kestrel team. So it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, that's a long time to wait to hear that ding. Um, but you can watch the trace and you know it's coming and then you can just sit there and wait for it, that ding to come back. So it's a good sound. That is awesome. One day I'm going to hit a mile. I'm going to get there. Yeah. The LaRue got me there. It was, it's a great rifle. It is a gas gun. So I now have my first bolt gun. I have an AI um, that I'll be taking down to shoot next week in West Virginia. So I'm excited to break that in too. That's awesome. I know we got 2000 yard ranges in South Carolina. I wonder if we have a mile range. Anywhere. I don't know. Blakely where I just was arena at Blakely has it. They go out to 2200. That's awesome. There was yeah, some, there was a couple of guys that hit like the 2200 and you could hear them like, Woo you know, screaming. Yeah, we, um, I mean, we are, so Kestrels are all made in the U S they're made right here. I mean, I'm actually in the office cause it was the quietest place to be. Um, so we're right outside of Philadelphia. Um, we don't have a lot of long ranges here. There's guns that are shot all around us, but it's not actually, you know, condoned shooting. So um, we don't have good long ranges. Our closest long range is about an hour away and it's a 700, 700 yards. If you kind of lay on one end and kind of angle towards another side and you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, we need to do discount corner. It's about that time. Heath, why don't you start us off with Discount Corner? Uh, let's see. Uh, American Defense Manufacturing. Uh, a three-gun 10 will get you 10% off of everything except for the packages, the scope and light packages and whatnot. 
um, Red Hill Tactical Clevenger, all caps. I think that'll save you about 10 or 15 percent on a quality holster. And uh, if you're looking for a good barrel, Criterion Barrels, hit us up on the, uh, the Facebook or the Instagram or whatever, me or Nikki, either one. And uh, same thing for a true spec. All right, I'm going to do Anthony's list mm. along with mine. So I'm going to have to read it because I don't have his memorized. I have to make notes a lot or of, do I, I'll miss something. A lot of his are, um, are the show ones, the show discounts. So uh, you can get a discount at tacticalshit.com with TSM10. Uh, that saves you 10% off anything at Tactical Shit, and the story goes, if you're at their actual store, that if you yell it at the cashier, you'll get it, although TJ says don't yell it because everyone hears it, but yell it anyway. Um, Dewey Rods, you can get 10% off, no, 15% off with Dewey Rods with TSM 15. Terran Tactical Innovations, you can get 10% off with TSM 10 at TerranTacticalInnovations.com. Um, base pads, all kinds of good stuff there that they have. Their Terrans always doing great stuff on guns, um, all the John Wick guns. UM Tactical, you can get 10% off with TSM-10. Carbon Arms, you can get 10% off with TSM-10 also on shotgun, uh, shell caddies, uh, chest rigs, the ratchet belts. I still love the ratchet belt. Um, Rand CLP. If you use Mindset 16, you can get 15% off at RANCLP.com. It's because it's two years old from 2016. Uh, <laughs> you, I know. You did Red Hill Tactical, right? Yes, I did. You already said that one? Yep. And then Gallant Bullets, you can get 10% off with TSM10 also. And you can go to the Shears Mindset store and shop there and get 10% off with the code GENTSM10. So go get some good deals there. Replacement 10. Replacement 10. No, Gen TSM 10. That's less letters. So so I don't have any questions, but I do have some comments on the Facebooks now. Ooh. Okay, go for it. Uh, Craig Cannon says 980. Kyle Murray's at 715. And looks like Miss Regina is at 1,600 yards. Ooh, go Regina. <laughs> It will be a random draw, not a who hit the longest, just to let y'all know. So yeah. those of us mere mortals that haven't hit way far out, like a mile, can still win. So you'll still be eligible, even if it's only 25 yards that you've ever hit. So make sure you put it on there. Um, back to one of the questions that we had kind of before we had to take a break and talk about the giveaway was about the update. So. And this is something I want to hear because Ryan Hay told me, not Ryan, was it Ryan or John Philbin? Somebody said, you need to do the update. I was like, where is it? And I never got around to looking into it. So what is this update they speak of and where can I get it? So the update, um, we did a, a pretty major update. So the current code version is 1.21. Um, and I really recommend that people update it. Uh, one critical thing is that before you update your Kestrel ever, save all of your guns onto your app and then update it because when these big updates come through they wipe all of your guns away and again speaking from from experience it really sucks when you lose a gun that you've spent a lot of time putting all that information into um so if you go onto kestrel link for ballistics it's our free app it's on android and ios um as soon as you connect your kestrel it's going to check your kestrel's code and it will let you know if you have a new code update so that's the, uh, the free way to get code updates as long for the life of your Kestrel as we push out new code, connect to the app and it's gonna just update your code. Um, if you want it to go faster, you can connect it to a PC and do it via PC. Um, via cable, there's a little optical port in the back, so it is a special cable. Um, but the current change to go from like 1.15, 1.18, which is what most people have, the 1.21 via your phone, it could take up to 30 minutes. Um, but it's it's definitely worth it. All right. And so get the app. And then how do you save your guns? When you link it, it automatically saves? No. When you link it, go into Manage Guns. And once you have your Kestrel connected, um, you can then have it linked. And you can just 
pull all of your guns. So pull all of your guns into your app and they'll be right in there. And then you can just push them back through. When you're done with updating, push them back onto your Kestrel. So I need to do that tonight yes. before I go to bed. Just let it be doing. Just let it do it. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely remember to pull all those guns back in because as you true your guns and as you build out your Cal DSF and you, uh, if you do any MV temp tables or anything more complex, you want to save all that data, not lose it. So push it onto the app and, and then you can pull it back in. Sweet. Um, this is kind of a fun question. So mm -hmm. this year has been named instead of the precision rifle series, it's been named the precision rain series because every match it has it been pouring down boring. rain. Yes. Like yes. I literally bought my gun a raincoat <laughs> for this match. And it's amazing. Joe Burdick is telling them y'all they're awesome. It's awesome. It kept my gun dry. So um, best oh. money I've ever spent. But so at the match, I was wondering as it's pouring and I'm like keeping my matchbook and my pen and my dope cards in a Ziploc bag. And I kept putting the Kestrel in there because I was like, I'm not really sure how waterproof this is. So is the Kestrel waterproof? Is it okay to be out in the rain? And, you know, it was really pretty, pretty wet out there. So how wet can it get? So this is why I'm supposed to do this kind of optical thing. So there it is in water. It's fully waterproof. It's, um, it's IP67, which means that you can submerge it uh, one meter, which is three feet for up to 30 minutes. And because it floats, uh, you'd actually have to push it down to get it farther than that. So you can put it in the water. And you know that's one of the other fun things about the Kestrel is that you can use it to do water temperature um, after the match. And you want to check what the temperature is for your adult beverages. You can put this into the cooler and, and see what the ice temperature is and do some other fun things. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Important things. Important. We have to know yeah. the important things. Yeah, for sure. What is one thing that the Kestrel does that most people don't realize it does? And I ask that because I swear every time I go to a match, I find out something else that this thing does. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So tell us one thing that maybe you've run across that a lot of people don't know. Yeah. So um, I saw this question in advance and I was like, oh, I should talk about this. And I'm like, oh, or this or this. So there's a bunch of stuff, you know, that kind of comes up um, in the new code. The one thing that I love in the new code is this target card. Um, it's something that we didn't have before and it allows you to build out 10 targets with any direction of fire. So just like you have the range card where you can see what your time of flight, what your wind one, wind two, everything on one card, the target card does that. Um, so most people don't know about that because it's new, um, but the Kestrel also can help you if you um, don't know the distance to a range, there is a range estimator inside the Kestrel um, that you can use to calibrate, to, to check that. And there's also um, a speed estimator for if you're ever engaging in any kind of movers and you wanna try and figure out what speed they're actually moving at. So those two things, um, the range estimator is, is a pretty cool one. Um, that once you figure out how to mill things and you can just figure out what the range is, um, it's come in handy a couple of times. That's really cool. And there'll be videos about those things? Yes, yeah, for sure. Yep. So we'll have short videos on how to use a range estimator, how to use the mover, you know, the target speed estimator. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be watching that channel. <laughs> Most definitely. Uh, Heath, you got anything live? Any more coming in over there? Heath's muted. He's muted. He forgot I muted him. I was trying to check, see if I have Sorry any. about that. Yeah. Oh. No new questions. No new yardages. Just a snoring dog. <laughs> Just a snoring dog. Yep. Oh, He's snoring. That, that makes me jealous. I want to be snoring like that. I know, right? <laughs> um, so Katie, what upcoming matches or what's coming up that's fun that you're going to be doing? You going to be doing any of the PRS matches this year? I am. I wanted, I was hoping to do more, but it, it's hard because I still travel for work and then with three kids and my family um, trying to balance all of that. And I know so many shooters, you know, struggle with that as well. Um, we, Kestrel actually hosts one of the PRS matches, one of the major matches, it's uh, at Peacemaker. This year it's gonna be in August, so I will absolutely be shooting at that one. 
Um, I also am going to be doing the core challenge in the fall uh, is also on my list. I love core shooting solutions. So that's a good one to go to. Um, and then I'm doing some classes, some courses. Um, we'll be at the NRA show. So we'll have a booth there. Uh, be doing some giveaways and we have some new products um, that we're going to be promoting there. So it'll be a good time to stop by the booth. Very good. So earlier we talked about the, uh, the different that there's the base model, the one that only does that doesn't have the ballistics calculator. And then there's the easy mode one and then the elite. So where can people find those? Where's the best place to buy them? And what's the price ranges on those? So, you really can. I mean, you can buy them anywhere. We do have our own store, kestrelballistics.com, so you can buy them direct from us. Um, and and uh, right now they're running through the production floor and straight out the door. So you can get them direct through us. You can buy them on Amazon. We have a lot of dealers. Um, you know, a lot of the ranges, you'd be surprised, but most of the ranges will have them. Core shooting solutions, if you're down in Florida, they have them at their range. Um, the basic Kestrels can run anywhere from $99 for just a wind meter um, up to about $300, $350 for the full uh, weather meter. And the um, basic Kestrel 5700 retails for $399. And then the Kestrel 5700 Elite is $699. So if you do get a Kestrel 5700 because you're starting out and you don't want to invest too much money until you know you love it, um, you can also do a code update in the future and you would just upgrade your, your code keep that same Kestrel and we'd upgrade you into an elite. That's awesome. So they don't have That's to good. actually buy another one. You can, uh, yeah, exactly. Start. Yep. And you're how much is that another, upgrade? Yeah, you're going to, uh, the upgrade is two ninety nine. So it's the same cost. You're not saving money and we're also not going to be taking more money from you because you weren't sure which one in, in the first place. Um, so it's just the difference on the price. That's awesome. So somebody just getting into it can start with that. And when yeah. they're like, oh, I really wish I had the elite, they don't have to try and like sell it and right. then buy another one. Right. They can just use their yeah. same model and update it. That is they really can. Cool. And people that have older Kestrels or in any shape, because um, we have, we've actually had a couple that were sent back to us that were shot, uh, which is really fun. I got to shoot a Kestrel before. That's good times. Um, <laughs> I don't recommend it, but uh, we do have a trade-in program. Uh, we work with americansnipers.org. They're a really, really great program. We've worked with them for a long time. Fantastic guys. And what they do is uh, they get products, not just Kestrels, but products out to snipers in the field. So um, they help support our troops and help support our snipers. Um, we love them. And so what we do is if you have an old Kestrel, you'll trade it in. We'll refurb it, clean it all up. We give you a trade-in value so you get a discount off of your new Kestrel. And that refurb units gets donated to them and they can get it out to guys that need it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a program that I really love. And, you know, I try and promote those guys as much as possible. That's awesome. Always giving back. I know Kestrel is at a lot of matches. I see a Kestrel or two on the prize table. So y'all definitely support the shooting sports. Yep. Like I said earlier, you know, it's, it's a great community and um, it's an easy community to to have a lot of good friends in and, and to really want to support. So um, you know, we're happy to do it. And, and we're, you know, we always love all the stories we get and, and we love to hear back from the shooters, you know, hearing that people use their caster on a match is, is really rewarding for us. Um, all the people in, in the back that we have, our production staff is all here. So I try and share stuff with them as well. And um, you know, it, it's fun for everybody. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great sport. I love it. So this, I don't know if this is an easy answer or not. I just thought of this question. So I didn't give it to you ahead of time. Sorry if it's uh, more complicated than can be answered quickly. But what is the difference between and which one should people choose when setting up their Kestrel between the G1 and the G7? So G1, G7, and custom curves. Um, I actually have a chart for that and I can show you. If you give me one minute. We like visual aids. That's yeah, good. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> now I'm moving. So the bottles of booze that I was supposed to keep hidden, you can now change. <laughs> um, but so G1 and G7, basically, that's just the form factor of the projectile that you're talking about. So 
if you can see on my nice little handy dandy chart, B1 is uh, the original form factor. So not very much like any bullets that we're shooting now. And G7 has that bow tail like most of the bullets that you see and what you're using. So G7 is typically the better uh, BCUs, but what we really recommend as far as if you're using the, the Kestrel Elite is to use one of Brian Litz's custom curves. Um, even when you have, when you use a G7, if you use a factory suggested BC, it might not be accurate. Um, as you know, it's kind of the case that a higher, people believe that a higher BC is gonna be a better bullet. So it's in, you know, a lot of businesses will kind of promote that higher BC. Um, so in our custom curve, when you build things out on our app, you can pull in a G7. If you choose to use G7 instead of a custom curve and you can actually get a, a fixed BC that Brian Litz has tested and used for that. So my opinion, I use G7 or I use a custom curve. And if I use G7, I'm using the G7 BC that Brian has supplied for my ammo. So the custom curves are based on what ammo you're shooting. Yeah, yeah. So, if so you they're have, in the app listed? Yeah, so um, so prime ammo, you know, you can go in and find your 260 and you can find the actual projected um, curve. So this one is not that great to, to look at, but it kind of shows you through the flight of the bullet, the subsonic, trans, and supersonic flights, what they're doing. Um, this light gray is the G, G1, so that do um and then these ovens this higher point here when they're going from in the other transonic um where the custom drag curve brian has put multiple points along this entire curve to really close in that curve. that's awesome i know i've asked a couple of people and people no one could tell me the answer to that they oh it's complicated or <laughs> it depends on what 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 you're shooting what caliber you know it nobody ever really had a really great explanation that I yeah. could understand. Well, and you know, like it, again, a lot of stuff for shooters is, is kind of what they prefer. Um, I know a lot of shooters that they have a certain round that they prefer to use the G1 and it's okay if it gets them, you know, you can true your muzzle velocity, you can um, do your Cal DSF. So you can really put all these points on the line. So a G1 is an effective um, BC to use. It's, it can be shooters preference. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Heath, do you have any uh, live? Let's double check here. Not looking like it. Not looking like it. Let me tell somebody. Uh, Jameson McAllister said only 500 yards. He needs to move it to the Facebook. So to go over again, we have... Um, the giveaway in case you came in late we have a giveaway she's going to give away a kestrel um, and the way you can enter is to go to the shooters mindset facebook page and there's a post that was announcing the show saying to join us live here and that this is the post for the to comment for the giveaway and if you put in the comments the longest target you've ever impacted no matter how far if it's five yards or 500 or whatever, put that yardage down and um, you'll be entered to win the Kestrel and we'll give it away at the beginning of next week's show. So make sure you go over there and do that and tell your friends. Um, but tell them they got to watch the show to find out how to do it. Don't just tell them the answer. <laughs> <clears throat> so, work. yeah. I know. Any plans for any new models or y'all just going to keep updating the um, 5700s? So that's a great question because we moved from the 4500 series to the 5700, um, I guess about three years ago. And, um, you know, everybody keeps doing updates. We, we try not to change the actual form factor. We try and do firmware updates. So um, we don't want you, it's not always the best business policy is that we don't want you to have to keep buying a Kestrel or a Kestrel. Um, we want to support our, our customers and, and give them a product for life. So. Um, right now, all of our plans, um, as far as the ballistics, is we have some accessories that we are working on, um, and then we just have new features that we're pushing out, um, and then, of course, our integration partners. So we're working with range finders, uh, we're working with um, laser range finders, weapons mounted, as well as handheld, we're working with scopes that can all talk to the Kestrel, so the Kestrel can give you your holds, and you can now see it, you know, if you 
uh, lays to a target, you get a range to a target, it'll send it over to the Kestrel, the Kestrel sends back the hold and you can just have it right in your field of view. So that's kind uh -huh. of where we're moving right now and what we're trying to do. Um, we're just always trying to support the shooters. That's awesome. That's what I was going to ask is if y'all did uh, change the actual model, can people continue to update this? But it sounds like y'all are going to keep updating this. You're not going to do like iPhone and like six months no. later have a, the a, a 700. A, no, we're not doing that. A 10 and you have to, and as soon as they come out with a 10, then the eight no longer works. You right. Know, that's how iPhones work. So <laughs> no, we're good. We're, we're definitely sticking with this. Um, you know, it's a good platform. It has that Bluetooth low energy, which allows us to connect to every phone um, and every every other device. A lot of devices are putting in Bluetooth low energy because that's become the way to talk to different devices. Um, so unless technology decides to take a big left turn and go in a different direction, that's the only reason that we would start making changes. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I mean. I love it. I tell you what, I wasn't sure. I was like, I mean, I told you in the pre-show, my very first match, I went with dope written on a index card. Right. And I was thinking, well, I mean, I got it written down. I can figure it out. But it didn't take into account anything about the environment or the wind or, you know. Right. So or the rest of the day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. So many factors that go into it when you're trying to hit little targets really far away. So. It's, I really geek out on it sometimes because it's a lot of fun. Like there's so much that you can put into it. And one of the other things that I love to do with the Kestrel, um, again, talk about geeking out, but you know, you can go in and figure out what matters and what doesn't really matter as much. Like when you talk about your bore height, what, if you mess up the measurement of your bore height by a quarter of an inch, what's that going to do to your hold at a thousand yards and at 500 yards and go through. So you can make those changes on the Kestrel and then go test them all out. Um, and I think that's a pretty cool learning tool to see what on a match day you need to panic about. Like, oh my gosh, the humidity changed this much. What's that going to do to my holds? You can figure out that humidity will make some changes. Temperature difference will make minor changes. You know, figure out what makes the biggest changes. That's little minute things you wouldn't even, well, I wouldn't even have thought would make a difference do definitely make a huge difference. It's crazy. Yep. Yep. For sure. And probably where it comes in making a difference, you know, like yardage wise, I would imagine a lot of that stuff, like say, <clears throat> if you're shooting at three gun, three and 400 yards, like, you know, five degrees temperature difference, I don't imagine it's really going to. Really minor. Right. Yeah. yeah. But a thousand yeah. yards, 1200 yards, probably a little bit different there. Yeah. Like the, um, the applied ballistics team just won the king of the two mile this year and they actually shot they the king of the two mile i guess it's been the third year i think and i apologize if i'm getting that wrong but this is the first year that anybody hit the two mile target and um it was the applied ballistics team so we were really thrilled to see that and they're a great team but science everything that went into that they have two spotters they're calling the wind calls it's amazing those little minute changes that that uh so, so yeah, like how many crosswinds are there in two miles? Yeah, right, right. I can imagine. I and, cannot even imagine. <laughs> yeah, if you have a chance to ever watch any of the videos, um, they have a couple of videos that they that I've seen online where you can hear the spotter calling him on, you know, making the adjustments and saying where the impact was, and another spotter adjusting it all out. So it's it's um you know we talked about the teamwork of a spotter and a shooter earlier to watch them walk on to two mile target um i think it was his third round that he hit it on it's it's amazing mm. how big was the target oh now you're really testing me I'm roughly I mean, uh i man size car size no it was smaller than a car um but it wasn't like a little lipstick um right. but it was actually smaller than i would imagine that you're gonna hit at a two mile spot mm. It's crazy. I'm telling you, they all look little at that far. The, the targets that they had at like 2120, even through my my 25 power scope, I was like, I mean, I see it. It's something orange, but like, I can't tell what shape it is. Mm -hmm. They all look little. Yeah. And you have to watch the time of day that you're trying for stuff like that, because that far out the mirage, you can completely lose the target. 
it, yeah, Mirage is crazy. I'm, I still haven't figured that one out. Uh, well, Mirage it completely is moves where you. Yeah, but it gives you good wind readings at the target. You know, if you can look at the Mirage and it's just kind of coming off or if it's blowing this way or that way, it gives you some good ideas. That's true. It's just whenever the target looks like, you know, you're like, am I drunk? And the target right. looks like it's moving, you know? Yeah. Should I hit the one in the middle? <laughs> I'm just going to send it. Yeah, let me just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I haven't I haven't figured that out yet. When it's that bad that it's almost moving, it other than to adjust my parallax and pray. Mm -hmm. but, as John <laughs> Philman says, as John Philman says, send it with Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he kept saying all weekend. Sending it with Jesus. <laughs> anyway, well, did you have any more on the Facebook page? Because nope. I think we're good on this end. Nope. I think that's we it. can wrap it up then, so we can to shout outs Heath all right get in the list here criterion barrels American defense Eagle imports SPS pistols true spec German precision optics the outdoor store Red Hill tactical safari land dangerous but good stage zero and zero tolerance just in case you want <laughs> Sweet. Katie, what kind of shout outs you got? You got any other shout outs? Yeah, I mean, well, all of my coworkers, because I think that they're watching, so I appreciate that. And of course, I already did my shout out for my kiddos, and they really better be asleep. My husband really needs them to be asleep too. So shout out to him. Hopefully they're in bed. <laughs> and and poor husband if they're not, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I will uh, maybe I'll be on the show a little bit longer until they are asleep, but then I'll be home. <laughs> yeah, text him like, are they asleep yet? Yeah. I need to know whether to keep talking. <laughs> uh, all right. And then my shout outs. Um, I'm going to shout out Prime Ammunition again. Shot their ammo this weekend. Even with the rain, everything, it ran flawlessly. Perfect. Much better than I ran it. Um, Night Force Optics for that awesome glass. Lansing Tactical uh, for all your gas gun needs. Kestrel, I always shout y'all out since you all support yeah. Team Prime. Um, it's my new favorite little toy. Grizzly Targets, uh, Sharpshooters of Augusta and Shooters of Augusta. Under Industries for great jerseys, Carbon Arms. Uh, Patriot Cases, I love my Patriot Case. It was wonderful this weekend to drag it into the hotel instead of trying to um, carry it. Just to have those wheels is amazing. <laughs> um, and I want to shout out my friend who's like the most awesome, awesome person now, uh, Regina Milkovich, who is number three in the PRS Yay, points so series. Awesome. Yay, Regina. Like that's the highest a female has ever been, and I'm so freaking proud of her. Keep shooting, and you're going to knock all the boys off, and I'm going to just sit here and laugh about it. I'm going to love it. So congratulations, Regina, and keep that up. We are all rooting for you. Um, and... I need to shout out Prentice Wink because he's been bothering me on Facebook wanting me to give him a shout out. I told him <laughs> he had to ask a question or I wasn't going to and he didn't, but I'm still going to shout him out. So shout out Prentice. Hopefully I'll see you at another match this year sometime soon. Um, and then we just want to thank you, Katie, for spending, what, an hour and a half with us talking about Kestrel and lots of knowledge bombs got dropped. Um, I will definitely be going to watch those videos at Kestrel Meter TV? Oh, Kestrel Weather Meters TV. Kestrel Weather Meters Kestrel TV. Weather Meters TV. All right, so go check yeah. them out on YouTube for lots of information on how to do everything. And now I know I can submerge my Kestrel in water and not have to worry about it. You're good to go. In fact, after those muddy PRS matches, you should rinse them out when you wash off the guns and wash everything else off. Throw the Kestrel in the tub and wash that off too. Just get all the mud off of it. It's a little scary, but okay. It's okay. You can do it. I hope like I got to put, like put a bolt gun in the tub. <laughs> well, I did have to hose my bolt gun off after LRSC because there was so really? much mud in it that I, I mean, I was like, I don't know how else to get it out. It's already drenched. I mean, it, it poured on us there. My gun wow. was soaked, but yeah. it was soaked with dirty, muddy water. I was like, well, I guess it'd be better to be soaked with like, clear water than muddy water so i was surprised i 
I thought I'd wiped my uh, rifle down pretty good after that special forces match up in North Carolina another week. And I pulled my rifle out to do a detail clean on it before I took it to the range today. And uh, I did it last night or the night before. And I was surprised to find water still. Still sitting in it? In it. Yeah, still sitting in it. I was lucky because it was That's... all oily, so no rust. But it was still water in there. I was like, wow. Been sitting in there for that's kind of scary two weeks yeah, that's so, crazy yeah yeah that's a little scary yeah well hopefully the to... next part of the season it'll be sunny sunny skies and beautiful weather today was it probably will be range. now because everybody's bought rain gear now that's and true for the that's rifles the and everything that's the so trick. now that we have all this it should be better <laughs> weather as long as we all bring it to the matches the rain won't fall so that's good <laughs> I'll just say another New Mexico story. Don't I've been in New Mexico several times and it's in the desert, so you don't take rain gear, right? It's in the desert, it's not gonna rain. Like my third or fourth year there, they had like record setting floods. <laughs> Literally. Stuff was bridges washed out, roads gone. I mean, it, it was horrible. And the bays were just standing. Oh. In water, we had to move some of the stages because they were deep in the bays, and I guess the bays kind of went downhill just a little bit the further back you got. So we had to take a bunch of the stuff up and move it back up the bay, so that you wouldn't be in water. And there were several stages that were still like ankle deep, like you just had to suck it up, get in there, and get wet. Yeah. After that, I don't even go to the desert without rain gear. It's fun to embrace it. Like little kids I don't mind it much. so much other than like having issues with guns running and things like that. Uh, it's the mud that gets everywhere. I mean, every time and I tell myself when I get down to the prone, don't put your right hand down. I still, every time I stuck both hands down, got down the prone, went to go run my bolt and it's like mud caked all over my hand. I'm trying to run the bolt with I had, I had mud all over the top of my scope because I, hold on top of my scope for certain positions mm -hmm. got mud all over my hands and held like this mud all over the scope uh, oh well it comes clean so it is what it is but we appreciate you coming on and talking about all this and we appreciate the giveaway so anybody well, still thanks. watching i appreciate you guys having me uh thanks for the invite and yeah i'm i'm uh, excited to be a part of it all right, so y'all go join the giveaway, like, subscribe to the channel. Underneath the video, there's a subscribe button, so be sure you subscribe to the channel and go comment your longest target you've ever hit on the Facebook page post and get entered for a free Kestrel. So thanks for having us, and we will see y'all next week.